Um, today we're going to be telling you a little bit about some of the opportunities available for healthcare professionals, both at the federal and state level. Um, there are a variety of programs available for both loan repayment opportunities and scholarship opportunities as well. So the main two that I'll be telling you about today are the National Health Service Corps programs and the HRSA Nurse Corps uh, programs. HRSA is the Health Resources Services um, Administration. Um, and for the National Health Service Corps, there are both loan repayment and scholarship programs. Um, there are a variety of eligible clinicians that can apply at the National Health Service Corps level. Um, the Nurse Corps programs, as uh, it kind of suggests, are for nursing students and um, licensed nurses only. So those, of course, nurse specific where the National Health Service Corps programs a um, variety of different clinicians. So for the National Health Service Corps Loan Repayment Program, this is a program that offers repayment of educational debt um, for full-time primary care clinicians. So there's an initial two-year service obligation, after which time the clinicians have the opportunity to apply for um, one-year extensions if they desire. Um, the maximum repayment amount during the first two years, so the initial service obligation, is $50,000, which is tax-free. So that can be a pretty big boost for um, clinicians with considerable student loan debt. However, the site vacancies at which these clinicians uh, choose to work have to be approved. Um, so we'll discuss a little bit more about the site requirements later on in the presentation. So there are full and half-time options for the NHSC loan repayment program. The full-time program requires a minimum of 40 hours per week worked by the clinician um, in a primary care outpatient setting. However, 32 hours um, per week need to be providing the direct patient care. Uh, up to eight hours a week for the full-time clinicians can be spent doing uh, a variety of different things, administrative duties, um, research, sometimes teaching. Um, however, for the half-time option, there is a minimum of 20 hours per week required of the clinician, and 16 of those hours are to be spent providing direct patient care. So for both the full and half-time options, there are, um, there's time off allocated under the contract, so in the event that the clinician needs to take time off or um, just vacation, family, what have you, that is worked into the contract to make it um, reasonable to complete the service obligation. So for the half-time option, there are two and four-year initial service commitments. Um, the award amounts correspond to the length of the service obligation. So the four-year commitments can yield the maximum award of $50,000 only under the half-time program. If a clinician wanted to do half-time program um, for two years, it's gonna be a smaller award amount. So, um, and again, here we have the addition, the potential for the one-year contract extensions as well. So listed here are the NHSC eligible clinician disciplines for the loan repayment program. You'll see that it's focused uh, primarily on primary care, uh, family practice, uh, although there are a number of mental health professions that are um, eligible for the program as well. However, nurses, you will notice, are not on this list, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later with the, um, the nursing opportunities. So there are also practice site requirements for the NHSC loan repayment program. Uh, the sites need to be located in a professional, health professional shortage area, which we refer to as HIPSAs. Um, these are sites generally that you're going to see, you'll see a number of different things. Sometimes you'll see a, um, a not a very high number of physicians, or you'll see a lot of um, residents in the area at or below the poverty level. Um, so it depends really what makes an area qualify as a health professional shortage area, but, um, but they're located throughout the state in a variety of different, um, different places. So um, comprehensive primary care is also required to be offered at an NHSC practice site. So um, this isn't going to be a program for people that are not offering the primary care. It has to be primary care specific. And the care also needs to be offered in an outpatient setting. So um, you'll notice that hospitals, uh, coming up here I'll show you on the slides, uh, hospitals are not included, just regular general hospitals. The site has to be specifically geared toward an outpatient setting. Um, and the last and probably most important part for the practice site requirements, um, the, big, the big key here is that the, the sites are going to be providing the services regardless of a patient's ability to pay. So the real key here is to provide the services for populations that otherwise might not be able to afford them on their own. 
So here are a list of some of the um, approved sites. These are the types of practice settings that you're going to see at the NHSC approved level for the, um, for the loan repayment. So public or private entities, community health center centers, also known sometimes as federally qualified health centers, and a variety of others as well, um, including critical access hospitals, which here um, there are some special requirements for care being provided at a critical access hospital for program um, awardees. It's a little bit more specific um, to the primary care, a little bit, a little bit more streamlined than the other list. Um, the, requ the hour requirements for critical access hospitals are also different for the program as well. Um, you'll notice that 24 hours per week for full-time providers need to be spent providing, um, excuse me, 16 hours per week spent providing outpatient care, um, direct patient care, while the other 24 hours can be spent in other parts of the hospital, the inpatient, swing bend unit, et cetera. And for uh, half-time providers, the hour requirements for outpatient direct patient care are also lower. So uh, we also have the NHSC scholarship program. Uh, this program is pretty competitive. It's for students <clears throat> who commit to practicing in primary care areas of what we call the greatest need. So those are areas that have a HIPSA score of greater than or equal to 16. The HIPSA scores generally correlate with higher levels of need. So the higher HIPSA score of an area, the, higher, the greater the level of need um, relative to the area. So um, the scholarship pays for tuition, other required fees and reasonable education costs. It also provides a monthly stipend of um, $1,289. So that amount is taxable, but it is nice for the students to have that extra income to be spending, um, particularly since many of them can't hold regular day jobs. So the required service commitment for this program is two to four years. Uh, it depends on how many years of scholarship support a student has received. So if a scholarship student has received or excuse me, if a student has received two years of scholarship support under the program, he or she commits to practicing for two years after being licensed in a HIPSA. So that's kind of how the program works. They get the funding while they go to school. When they finish with their schooling, they can then work the service obligation out after they complete their schooling. So the list of eligible clinicians here is also um, pretty small, but focused on, um, focused on primary care the regular MD, DO um, in the family practice setting, pediatricians, um, as well as dentists, psychiatrists, and um, nurse practitioners, physicians assistants, certified nurse midwives. So the HRSA Nursing Corps Loan Repayment Program, this is um, one of the two programs specifically available for nurses, but it's at nur for nurses at all levels of nursing, so RN, LVN, BSN, all nursing, um, all levels of nurses are eligible to apply for the program. And here they receive money as repayment or as compensation to help them pay back their student loan debt. So um, this amount is taxable, which is different from the NHSC programs. The actual um, loan repayment amount given is taxable here. Um, so it's just a slight difference between the programs. Uh, there's a two year initial service commitment for this program as well. For the first two years, at most, um, nurses can receive 60% of their total qualifying student loan balance, so, um, or their nursing loan balance. Um, so they, they don't always receive that 60% amount, but that's the maximum amount for the two years. An optional 30-year service can yield 25% of the original qualifying student loan debt. So um, a pretty significant amount of a nurse's student loan debt can be repaid by just simply offering three years of service. So here's a list of some of the um, Nursing Corps Loan Repayment Program eligible sites. You'll notice that hospitals are included on this list, and that's just because of um, the number of positions available to nurses at regular general hospitals. We do encourage um, other nurses to apply at some of the other types of clinics listed here, um, but hospitals still are available for um, nurses to apply to this program. So the funding preferences for this program are going to go to applicants that have, um, that have basically larger uh, loan debt amounts. So um, if their qualifying educational loan debts are 40% um, or, great, or greater than their annual base salary, they're going to be favored for um, being awarded with this program. 
also nurses who work at some of the, um, the sites listed on the right here are also going to be favored. And you'll see that regular hospitals are not listed here. That's because regular hospitals, um, for the nurses, there are a ton of spots open, but often those hospitals are not located um, exactly where the greatest need is. And the sites listed here um, are some of those that are of the greatest need. So we'd really like to encourage the nurses to get into those areas um, that are underserved. So the Nursing Corps Scholarship Program, um, again, very competitive and for nurses only, nurses of all levels. And the same thing, um, very similar to the nurse, uh, NHSC program, uh, scholarships are awarded while these students are attending school. When they complete their programs, they are then obligated to complete two to four years of service, depending on how much they received during, um, during their schooling. And uh, here the service obligations can be fulfilled on either a part-time or full-time basis to allow these new grads a little bit more flexibility. Uh, the scholarship covers tuition and required fees, as well as other educational expenses, books, clinical supplies, um, and also offers a $1,300 stipend um, monthly for, for, the, um, for the awardee as well. And again here, preference is given to applicants that have the highest financial need. So. Again, here's another list of um, scholarship program eligible sites for the nursing corps. Very similar to a lot of the other lists, but there are uh, slight differences from list to list. So um, for applicants that are interested, they should pay special attention to those. So the last program I'll be telling you about today is the California State Loan Repayment Program. It is a federally funded program that is run by the state of California and um, awardees of the program are clinicians who commit to practicing here in the state of California. So the requirements to apply for um, the SLRP award, uh, pretty simple, you must be a US citizen, possess a current unrestricted license, be free of federal judgments, et cetera. Um, also, these programs um, discussed here today cannot be entered into concurrently. So awardees are encouraged to uh, apply to as many programs as possible, but they can only accept one award. Um, it's pretty key for the people applying. Sometimes they can, if they get awarded more than one, they have to simply just choose one. There can't be um, simultaneous service obligations going on. Oh, and just another side note about the previously mentioned NHSC programs. Um, those do not require um, applicants to be US citizens. They, permanent residents can also apply for the program as well. But for the California State Loan Repayment Program, um, it's a requirement that applicants be US citizens, so. Um, here's a list of the eligible clinician disciplines for the State Loan Repayment Program. We've got a variety of primary care specialties here. Uh, new to the program this year are pharmacists. So um, we'll be receiving applicants now to see, I don't know how many um, pharmacist applications we'll receive, but we are just starting that this year, as well as a variety, again, of mental health professionals, and then um, the, the general MD, DO, physician assistant, nurse practitioner, et cetera. So the SLRP award amounts listed here are, um, these are current, they actually just changed this year. For the two year commitment, a total of $50,000 can be awarded to a full-time clinician who commits to providing service in an underserved area. Um, the key with the SLRP award amounts, however, tw um, half of the award amount is paid for by the state um, through our program, and the clinician's site at which he or she is employed pays the other half of that amount. So, um, so that's the key to remember here. But as the years go on, these, um, these third, fourth, and fifth years that you see listed are extension years. Those are entered into after the original two-year service obligation has been completed. Um, and then actually our program is also, as of this year, not limited to a fifth year. Uh, we have been granted permission to go ahead and extend contracts for as long as physicians have qualifying student loan debt. So they can keep applying until their loans are entirely paid off. On the right, you'll see the um, equivalent halftime awards as well. They're, they're lower than the full-time awards. So with regards to the award selection, um, we look at the application. There are a lot of different factors that we look at on the applications that we receive. Um, we look at whether the applicant has training or uh, work experience in a medically underserved area. Uh, we look at their cult uh, cultural comp competency and linguistic competency. So, it isn't required that applicants speak more than one language, but bilingual applicants are favored. Um, 
And then also we just like to know their reason for wanting to participate in a program like this. Uh, we look at their background, maybe where they grew up, where they went to school, that type of thing. So when we distribute the awards, we try to distribute them as evenly as possible throughout the state in um, different types of practice area. That is rural, urban, frontier, um, as well as north to south. So we try to get applicants up in the north, in the central um, valley, and then in Southern California as well. Uh, and we also try to um, award as many different disciplines as possible. We don't like to give all of our award funds out to MDs and DOs. We really want to encourage you know, mental health professionals, pharmacists, registered dental hygienists, all of those other eligible clinicians to apply and to be awarded. So. So our application process um, has changed a little bit. It's, it's subject to small changes um, year in and year out, but it typically takes place in the fall. So um, for, for those students or um, licensed professionals that would like to apply to, any, to, <clears throat> to the SLRP program, um, September 1st is usually the day to start kind of looking at that to see, um, to see when it's available. And a final comment about the SLRP re, um, site requirements. Again, um, public or private not-for-profit -for entities are what you're mostly going to see for these practice sites. Um, they're located within California HIPSAs. Um, and again, the most important part, the site must be willing to match the award uh, offered by the state of California. So. And there are a variety of links available to visit for more information. And that'll be it. Thank you. Um, Charlene also works with the Office of Statewide Health Planning and Development, and she is going to discuss some of our department's other programs in detail. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having us here today. My name is Charlene Almazan. I am from the Health Professions Education Foundation, and I am here today to talk to you about the scholarships and loan repayments that we offer. Um, they are very similar to the NHSC programs with a few slight differences. So um, I will go ahead and begin. We are also under the Office of Statewide Health Planning and Development. Um, we are a nonprofit organization that was statutorily created back in 1987. Um, so we are a nonprofit, but we are under the state of California. And our goal and our mission um, is to improve access to health care in medically underserved areas of California. And the way we do that is in two specific ways. We are trying to help recruit um, new providers into medically underserved areas through our scholarship programs. And our scholarship programs are for students who are at currently accepted or enrolled into various healthcare programs um, throughout the state of California. Um, and once they are awarded, they agree to, after they graduate, then work in a medically underserved area of California. The second way we try to improve access in these areas is through our loan repayment programs. Um, similar to NHSC and SLURP, um, we offer loan repayment programs to different um, health professionals who are currently working in medically underserved areas of California um, in qualified facilities, very similar to the facilities that are required for NHSC and SLURP. Um, and if you are, for example, a registered nurse working in an underserved area now in California and you have educational debt, we will help you repay back your educational loans as long as you continue to stay in those areas. So we are trying to help retain those, education, or those professionals in these areas um, by offering these financial incentives. 
here is a look at the 13 programs that we do offer. They run the spectrum from allied healthcare um, programs and allied health professionals and students um, to physicians, mental health providers, and nurses. Um, as you can see, we have scholarship programs for the various um, students and then also loan repayment programs um, as well. And I'll go into um, some of the eligibility criteria and what you need to do in order to apply. So these are our scholarship programs. Um, they run, um, our different award amounts range from about $4,000 all the way up to $50,000. So starting with the Allied Healthcare Program, it awards from four dollars to $8,000 um, for one academic year. Uh, vocational nursing awards up to also $8,000. The LVN to ADN scholarship program awards up to $8,000 a year um, for one academic year. ADN, the ADN scholarship is $10,000. BSN is $13,000. And then the Health Professions Education Scholarship awards up to $50,000 for one academic year. So the way our um, scholarship programs work is first, you apply to our online through our online application. You do have to be accepted or enrolled into a current program. If awarded, you will sign a contract stating that you will graduate with your degree, become licensed, and then find work somewhere that's considered medically underserved. And that service obligation ranges from one to two years for our scholarship programs. Um, as I said before, you are awarded up to $50,000 um, depending on the program. Once you graduate, um, you then will find work in these areas. And um, what you need to know is, unfortunately, we do not place you in a facility. It is um, your responsibility as an awardee to find a facility that qualifies, but there are very many places in California that qualify, and you kind of saw a list through Sarah's PowerPoint presentation. Um, and we do not take any of your salary. This is just um, for the scholarship program, you are get, getting the money up front. And then once you work, um, we do, we, you know, that is all yours. We are just monitoring that you are working, providing direct patient care in your profession for those number of years um, in a qualified facility. So some of the requirements once you're awarded, you do have to be in school full time and maintain at least a 2.0 GPA. Um, you are required to contact us if you have any changes in your enrollment or any of your contact information changes. Um, once you graduate, you are required to pass your exams or your, um, to become licensed or certified um, and then find a job in a facility that qualifies providing that care. So our loan repayment programs, um, again, are varied in award amount and service obligation. So our allied healthcare loan repayment is for, for example, phys um, physical therapists, radiology techs, um, who are currently working in underserved areas and can be awarded up to $8,000 for a one-year service obligation. Um, the Stephen M. Thompson Physician Corps loan repayment um, awards up to $105,000. So over the course of three years, you will be awarded that funding in order to repay your um, educational loans back um, as long as you are currently a physician working in a qualified facility. So the process is very similar to the scholarship. You do have to apply and may, um, make sure that you are eligible um, for the program. You will, once you are awarded, you sign a contract stating that, yes, I will be in a medically underserved area and a medically qual qualified facility um, and continue to work in my profession for those years. And um, again, the award amounts do um, vary from program to program. Some of the requirements while, while you are in the program and providing your service, um, providing your care um, in your service obligation, you do have to be board certified or licensed, providing um, direct care in a qualified facility. If you do switch employers, which you are welcome to do, you do have to make sure that your new employer qualifies as well um, as being part um, medically underserved or a health 
professional shortage area or one of the other um, designations that Sarah mentioned before, um, federally qualified health center, Indian health center, county, state and veterans facilities also qualify for most programs. And these are some of the st statistics from the last two years. Last year, um, because we are a nonprofit, we are funded through licensure fees, um, grants and, donati and donations. And last year we received a large grant um, which allowed us to award m a, a lot more people. As you can see from 2012-13, um, we received 2,000, 679 applicants and awarded 1,378. And then the next year, we, were award, we awarded about 2,000 um, applicants and our funding increased, almost tripled. Um, so we were, allowed, we were able to award a lot more people. Um, I would say we award about 40% of the folks who apply. So it is worth the time in the application, taking the time to make sure you answer personal statement questions and, um, and all of that. So those are some of our statistics. Our application is actually available today. Um, it's been available since, I believe, the 15th of October. No, the 6th of October. Thank you. Um, and it will be available until November 30th. So if you are currently in a program today, um, accepted or enrolled into one of these programs, you can apply now for funding for the spring semester. Um, if you are a loan repayment, or if you are a current provider um, in an underserved area, you can also apply today for a loan repayment starting next year. Um, and if you are not yet in a program, please um, come back and check our website when you are, because these applications are available yearly, year to year, um, and the funding um, is usually pretty steady. We, we usually receive the same amount of funding year to year to be able to award folks. So once you are accepted into a program, please take a look on our website to see when we are having our application cycle. This is our phone number, email, and we are also on Facebook and Twitter. If you'd like to connect with us through those networks, we always give out a lot of information about the cycle and applying to different programs. And that is the end of our presentation. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? And if so, we, there are microphones here in order to ask questions. We must be very good at presenting because it looks like there are no questions. But if you do have questions, you can always contact us at our um, emails or call us on the phone. We are more than happy to help answer questions um, that come up.